Hi everyone, today I will walk you through my complete packaging design process. The product packaging has a big influence on the buying decision of a consumer. Aside from protecting the actual product, an effective packaging makes a great first impression, relays the necessary information, and most importantly, it helps brands stand out and differentiate. Designing for the package comes with a lot of technicalities. In this video, I will be breaking down all the fundamentals from understanding the brand and the product, working with dye lines, and making the actual design. Today, I will be working on a tea brand, and I will use Pacdora to bring my designs to life. So if you want to know how I did this, then keep watching. An effective packaging starts with a discovery session with a client. This can be done in many ways, but I find that setting up a call works best for me. The goal here is to extract information about the brand and the product, their target audience, competitors, the qualities that make the product unique, and the features that they want to highlight. I then go to the technical details like the type of packaging that will be used and the dimensions. I also ask if this is a single product or a product line with different variants. I summarize the goals, deliverables, and all relevant information in this simple creative brief template. Before the call ends, I remind them of the things that I would need. Also, keep in mind that products are governed by regulations, and this differ from country to country, so it's best to coordinate with your client the requirements in their area. Before designing, it is important to gather inspiration to really get the creative juices flowing. I get inspiration from sites like Behance, Dribbble, Instagram, and Pinterest. My goal here is to translate the information given by the client into a collection of visuals that represents the brand and the product. I then create a mood board from the images that I saved to set a specific visual direction. In my previous video, I mentioned that inspiration doesn't have to be limited to works by other designers. One that has been working for me is using other media to understand the product, how it is made, how it is being used, and where it is sourced from. Having a copy or trying a sample of the product also helps because you get to be in the position of the consumer and you get a feel of the overall experience. For the next part, I will show you how I prepare my workspace in Illustrator. I start with a new file, go to the print tab, and choose one of the templates here. For packaging, it is important to set this to high and use the CMYK color mode. The main working space in a packaging design is called a die line. This is a template that shows the cuts and the folds of your packaging. So a die line has three important zones. The trim line is where the sheet will be cut. The background of your design should extend up to the bleed to prevent unprinted edges caused by slight movements during printing. All relevant information like text, logo, and icons should be placed within the save zone so they don't get accidentally cut off. So to demonstrate, I have here a sample box. This one is the trim line, and beyond this is the bleed. We also have here like an imaginary line, and inside it is the save zone. Now, die lines are usually provided by the printer that your client is working with, but some die lines are also available on sites like Pacdora, who is also the sponsor of this video. Pacdora is an online packaging design tool that integrates dye line customization, high quality 3D mockups, 
and rendering in a single platform. They have an amazing catalog of packaging guidelines. They have over 2,000 templates that you can search by use case or by the type of model. I found here the dye lines similar to our box. And one of the customizations you can do is modifying the dimensions. I will change this to a 3.5 inch cube. They have here a 3D preview of the packaging and there is a slider here that lets you close or open the box. There are also cool animations like scale, translation, and rotation. Being able to interpret how packaging folds is a skill needed by packaging designers and I love how this collapse feature shows exactly how the packaging is formed. Pactora allows you to design within the site, but for now, I will export the dye line and design in Illustrator. The first thing that I will do is work on my layers. The dye line layer goes first, another layer where I will do all the designs, and a background layer. I will then copy the bleed line and paste this in place on the background layer then convert this to a fill. One of the main challenges of packaging design is how you can creatively fit all information in a limited space and in a layout that makes sense. Hierarchy is very important in packaging. A great layout has a smooth flow of information that guides the consumer so here I list down all information and decide which one should be prioritized and which one has the least importance. There are many ways on how you can create ideas for the design. I always like to go back to my mood board to pick up some elements that stand out. I then sketch different thumbnails of possible layouts. I take this sketch to Illustrator and use this as reference in doing the designs. I also explore different typography options and combinations. When doing the initial iterations for the design, it is okay to use placeholder images or text just to see how it would look like or if it works or not without spending too much time or effort. And here's how I designed the rest of the packaging. When designing certain sections of the die line, keep in mind how the packaging would look like once folded. This logo, for example, has to be rotated 180 degrees for it to look right once printed. This is the completed design for the first one in this product line. 
I make copies of this design and use the Recolor Outwork tool in Illustrator to explore color options for the rest of the products. Once I am happy with the designs, I turn off the visibility of the dye line layer and export the files so I can use this to create mock-ups that I will present to the client. Mock-ups help your client visualize your designs. There are ready-made PSD mock-ups available online. But today, we are exploring the 3D Creator feature of Pacdoor to create high-quality 3D mockups that will impress your clients. In my workbench, I can pull up the file that we just did. I will go to design mode and here you can upload the packaging design for the box. Now I just have to scale and move this around so it fits the template. If you want to do your designs here, they have here a panel with icons, shapes, patterns, and simple layouts. Now let's go to mock-up mode, and here you have an amazing 3D look of the packaging design. From here, we can take it a step further by clicking this one to enter the 3D modeling center. Place the model here and scroll to zoom in. There are also many options here for the aspect ratio. Every model in the 3D plane has a gizmo. Square is for scale. Circle is for rotation. And the arrows to move it along an axis. You can also experiment using basic shapes to create something like a platform. What I love is they also have some pre-made scenes that you can use. These are very well made and you have a lot of options so you can choose which one fits your packaging design. The scene will automatically use your 3D models and you can click this image to go back to the original view. Once you are happy, go ahead and click render now. It will show here the progress of the render and you can download this once it's finished. I am repeating the same steps for the remaining designs so I can place them all in one scene. You can find all of them in the models tab and you can simply drag and drop into your scene. Once rendered, you will see a much more realistic look with all the shadows and all the highlights. Back in mockup mode, you can also render the 3D look, the dye line, and videos with very cool looking animations. You may use all of these mockups to present your designs to your client. Once approved by the client, here are some finishing touches before you send the file for printing. First of all, check the file to see if there are spelling errors. You can also create a folder to store all the fonts that you used in the document. But a better practice is to outline all the texts in your design so it looks exactly the same in other computers. 
Another way to do this is to go to Object, then Expand. Also make sure that all images in the file are embedded. Printers usually request AI or PDF files. In the case of PDF, always set this one to high quality print. We are done and you may send this now to your client for printing. To wrap it up, here is a quick presentation of the packaging design. <music>